gentleman here, by the way, one of our panelists this morning is Dr. Christopher James Doig. You can call him Chip, if you will. Uh, he's a professor and head department of critical care medicine at the University of Calgary, and a bunch of other words here as well, too. A bunch of dumb words. <laughs> but don't Chip, put on a card. It, we know that it's Brain Awareness Week, which is Monday right through Friday, so next week. Is it, why is it important to have an awareness week for, for brains? So, so listen, uh, you invest a lot in your personal health and you invest a lot in your brain. Apart from that, much of what makes you who you are is not your physical appearance, it's your connectedness to your community, it's your memories, it's your personality, it's your laugh, uh, it's your family and friends, it's your love of country music, or in yes. my case, rock music. <laughs> yes, yes. And, and so, um, who you are, in a lot of ways is your, your functioning of your, your brain. So it's really important, number one, to prevent brain injuries. If we can prevent brain injuries, we can prevent a whole uh, downstream consequences of brain injuries. Mm -hmm. The first and, and most important one is the death of individuals, but also the recovery that it takes for individuals who have Speed suffered an injury. Yeah. We have a video question for you, sir. So have a look and have a listen. I'm Lori Kokus from Calgary, and I'd be interested to know if brain injury survivors have to deal with a sense of loss of identity. So let's get deep into it. So now we have a perfect example here that probably both of you can answer this question. First, doctor, yourself, a loss of identity? So I think many survivors of brain injury that recover, like Denise has, recover awareness, consciousness, recover who they are do undergo a change. So Denise is probably better able to explain the hidden disability behind it. But my nephew uh, suffered a brain injury a number of years ago, was, was actually in my ICU. Around his family, we recognize slight differences to him. You probably wouldn't mm. if you met him. But that's part of the hidden disability that some survivors have. And I think Denise could probably explain it better. Loss of identity. Did you find that, Denise? Very much so. And I'd be shocked. And in, in the volunteer work I do with other survivors, I see each of them experiencing as well. I'd be shocked if one survivor didn't go through it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, what I found is Elizabeth Kubler-Ross has identified the five stages of grieving. And I ended up having to use those for myself in grieving the loss of who I was, no that kidding. person actually left wow. on August 11th, 2001. So I found in my journey, I had to go through all five stages. And so it started with having, you know, going through denial. Then there was a lot of anger, mm. bargaining, you know, wondering what if, if I had had a helmet on, would that have made a difference if yes. the ambulance had gotten there sooner, all of that. Then it led into depression and then finally to acceptance. And so it's a real, journey and, I, and it's very unique. Mm -hmm. I mean, each brain injury is, is as unique as that individual, but there's definitely a sense of loss. And I bet you're hearing these stories from other survivors as well too. Uh, absolutely, so, so you think about something like an operation on your abdomen where you have a scar and you see it and you might have difficulties- Accepting it? Coming to terms with it. Yeah. The scars for, for injuries, uh, for survivors of brain injuries are often hidden because they're, mm -hmm. they're, they're inside. We've learned a lot over the years about brain injuries. There's a lot of talk and has been over the last couple of years about concussions and the effect that it can have on an individual. We never knew what we knew, what we know today, 30 years ago. Brain research has taken a whole new level. Are we making advances in this area? Absolutely. So uh, first off, we're very fortunate in Calgary. We have. Uh, a huge amount of money being invested by our community, but also by our government and public institutions like the University of Calgary and the Cumming School of Medicine into brain research. Mm. So we hear a lot about the improved outcomes from stroke, uh, the work being done at the Hotchkiss Brain Institute. I can assure you that we are also making improvements in the survivorship from other types of brain injury, Fantastic. like traumatic brain injury. And we've been fortunate, you know, Calgary is a beautiful community. Love, uh, you know, Kate's out walking in our beautiful sure. parks. We've been able to recruit some of the some of the best physicians in the world, including into our intensive care units, who are actually now neurocritical care specialists, experts mm. at just looking after brain injuries. And one of my colleagues, Andreas Kramer, who's one of these individuals, published our data on our improved outcomes from brain injury, and we're fortunately seeing 
very significant reductions in death from brain injury and we're seeing mm. overall improved outcomes. Because of education? Mm. Partly because of education Stories and prevention. Stories maybe that Denise Absolutely. might share too. Yeah. So, so listen, mom, dad, if you're on the ski hill and you've put your kid in a helmet, if you're on the bike paths and you've put your kid in a helmet, if you're uh, skating with your kid on the ice, right. just put, put the helmet on. So prevention is a big thing, but it's also the, the treatment for individuals that have suffered brain injuries. And how many times have we seen groups of, of families where the kids have the helmets, but the parents don't? What kind of example are you setting their parents? Just saying. Brain <laughs> researcher, uh, Dr. Christopher James Doig, uh, CHIP, professor in the head, Department of Critical Care Medicine at the U of C. Great to have you here this morning, sir.